art and crafts have always been a bona fide expression for humans. Creativity takes courage and Sri Lanka's artisans have been courageous enough to revive characters of royalty, mystery and healing for centuries. Just off the southwestern coast, en route to Gaul, is the bustling town of Ambalangoda, a hub for mask plays and rituals that are performed for different occasions. Developed by the Karawa people, known as the Fisher community, it is a craft and a way of life that have been passed on to generations. These works of art are part of Sri Lanka's ancient cultural traditions that instills faith in its communities. Its uniqueness still draws in visitors from different parts of the world that, like me, appreciate genuine handcrafted renditions of our past. I am going to take a closer look at these Sinhalese traditions to understand its importance to Sri Lanka and its people. When you mention the town Ambalangoda, the first thing that will pop into any Sri Lankan's mind is masks. Every Sinhalese mask created is not just for decorative purposes or to ward off evil, which are some of its uses in modern times, but rather each mask is a symbol of a folklore based on religion, history and social values. Ancient medicine men personified various diseases in the form of demons. There were 18 diseases that attributed to 18 demons and a mask was made to depict each of these demons to control illness. The Sunni Yakuma ritual or the dance of the 18 Sunni rituals is held when they believe that a demon is responsible for the disease. This is the most elaborate healing ritual. An auspicious date and time is fixed for the ceremony and the ritual begins after worshipping Lord Buddha. Mask sculpting is a tradition that originated from South India, especially for worshipping devils. Sri Lanka adopted these rituals but put their own spin on it by using different colours and designs. Just take a look at the detail. While the Sunni masks are used in devil dancing ceremonies to cure illness, Raksha masks are often seen in processions and festivals. Out of the 24 types of Rakshas, the Cobra Raksha is the most popular, a form that a Raksha transforms themselves into when they need to frighten others. Once their victim faints, out of fear, the cobra would then carry them to be their slaves. The third type of mask is the Kola mask that is used for satirical drama. It was first introduced to revive the cravings of a pregnant queen. This performance was called the Kola Madhwa, a highly sophisticated and complex play. All the scenes from Kola drama are referred to real life situations such as the Anabera Kolama and Raja Kolama. Families that still engage in the form of mask making. 
today and I'm lucky enough to meet a maestro in masks who's learned the art from his father at the age of 12 and today has won many national awards. Mr. Ravindra, what about the Kyan Kulwanda? Make Kalave, Vedagat Kam, what a Kina Vedagat Kam Mukhat. Kalam make Kalam, Kalam make a Param Padika Kalava, which more than a Kalava, and a Kiri and a Katana. They can make it on now, I can look Param Param, make it again in a hair. The Paul Keeper from the Mamalangura Tinne may in the Mega Ganata Honda again Tamantan Idhase, Tamangi, Tina Hakiava, Mega Kalivala, we Honda Adama Kuagan. एक ने गुड़ा कटिया एक ने पढ़ो इल्लूम करना अपने इन्हें प्रमाण है सफेद करने में आप आप दावे दिन ने मगर मेक करना करते हैं इन्हें इतना सुलु प्रमाण है एक लोग ये दिन देंगे मुसीया किल्लो अत्ते में अपने सीया में कपाट दिन ने में आप इतना the dried mask is then smoothened out and a basic layer of colour is applied to it. All masks are carved from the timber of a tree known locally as Kaduru. Kaduru wood is soft and easy to cut. When it is dry, it becomes light in weight but durable, making it easier for carving. No machinery is ever used apart from the craftsman's hands and his tools. Just like Kaduru is used for carving masks, it is also used for making puppets. Puppetry is a skill known by a few in Ambalangoda and used for the purpose of portraying folk drama locally known as Nada Gama. It is believed that this too was adopted from South India. Puppets are used to bring all kinds of stories to life, such as the Sunni and Kolam stories, as well as tales from rural villages. I met with Nalin Gamvari, a well-known puppet master in Sri Lanka with many international appearances and awards under his belt. Puppetry has been in his family for over 250 years and Nalin has faithfully taken on this traditional art form into his hands. <laughs> And then they got a titta kalao, not on a natun kalao, Gitagana Karana Gayana Hakiav, Wadana Banda Eva Hama Hakiama Tina Rukal Ship Hama Hip Adavana Tur Ama Ship could make Hakiav Neta, but to buy Puna Rukal Ship put a Hakiav Tina Toda Kalao and Goda. How are you, my dear sons and daughters? I wish you all a happy day. My name is Didani. I am the most knowledge, most intelligent man in the village. So I invite one of our daughters to tell something about our art puppetry. 
episode by us taking Mark Perrin. Puppeteering in Sinhalese means rukada kalava, which means half a picture replicated, while the other half is, of course, the puppeteer himself. This fire dancer, one of Nalin's special performances, is from a low country healing ritual called the Devil Madhua. According to the ritual, the dancer attempts to frighten the sick with fire torches in his hands and mouth, believing that the individual would heal. There are over 200 puppet characters that Nalin uses to illustrate over 20 ancient stories. All of his puppets are carved and painted by him. <laughs> As the world moves towards a digital age, there is a palpable decline in traditional forms of entertainment like puppetry. Due to its economic conditions, Nalin's son is not keen to take on his ancestral way of life. This is why the Ministry of Culture and Art and the Central Cultural Fund are developing programs to encourage and promote the traditions of mask making and puppetry. To further strengthen this cultural heritage, the Ambalangoda Mask Museum showcases a depth of knowledge on the origins of the Sunni and Kolam rituals. Masks are carved to not merely show off the skills and artwork of the craftsman, but rather to give a sense of the maker's understanding of their philosophy through the culture and the environment in which they lived. This means that the craftsman needs to prepare himself mentally if he is to acutely depict a character. It is their belief that without this understanding, the art of making masks is pointless. <laughs> 